everybody. So we're out in the shop with another Shop Talk Tuesday. And in this episode, we are sharpening the two knives that we just got done finishing. So this is the one that we just finished, the 26C3 Hidden Tang with that Tasmanian Myrtle. Then the little chopper that we did here with the Farrier's Rasp Knife, <laughs> little chopper. Uh, this one is the one that has the black G10 and that awesome dyed burl. So we are gonna be sharpening both of these in this episode. Now, without getting too off into the edge geometry-ness of two different knives like this, I do want to talk about that for a second so you kind of understand the difference between the two knives. So, chef style knife, outdoor camp style knife. So something that you can actually chop through lumber with or, you know, a branch or something like that and still have a nice sharp edge. This is going to have a thicker bevel going into that primary bevel where the cutting edge is going to be versus this one where the blade comes to a thinner edge. Now the reason behind that, we want more meat behind our cutting edge on this one so that it can stand up to that use and abuse. This one doesn't have to be that way because the craziest thing we're going to chop on it is vegetables. <laughs> so we don't have to worry too much about anything hurting this one. Now could you chop into a 2x4 and through a 2x4 with this knife? Yes. I've taken chef's knives and chopped through 2x4s plenty of times. So it's doable. It's just not exactly what the knives are built for. But without getting too into the whole edge geometry talk on there, what we've got to do on these two is get them sharpened. Now we're going to be doing pretty much all of both of the edges on this on the 2x72. And then we're going to go and strop them on our little stropping pad that we have. So that's what we're going to work on. We're going to start with a 400 grit belt to get that bevel set on both of these. And then we're going to go up through our belt progression up to a 1000 grit belt. So 400 and then 600, then 800, then 1000. So that is the goal here. That's what we're going to work with. And I'm going to strop and then we're going to cut some stuff. So let's get into this and get this thing knocked out. So we're going to start this off with a brand new 400 grit belt and we're just going to get the edge set and all I'm doing with this is just making sure that we are keeping it nice and even going across here because even though this isn't the actual sharpening part of this, this is going to determine what the rest of our edge looks like progressing through the belts. So we want to make sure it's nice and even from the get-go so that the rest of the steps are a lot easier and we're not trying to correct something with a higher grip belt. The reason why is because the higher you go with the grit, the easier it is to really heat up your blade and end up accidentally overheating your edge because you are trying to, you know, hog off a section of material with a belt that was not meant to hog off material. And the whole thing that we're trying to focus on with this is making sure we're staying super consistent. Now I did wet the belt with some Windex. I'm gonna end up doing that with the 600 grit, the 800 grit, and the 1000 grit. The belt we're working with right now is a 600 grit. And you'll notice that I'm really just focusing on the same hand motion each time I pull across so that I can keep my bevel at the same angle or degree. Now, I don't really use anything to measure the degree of my bevels or anything like that. A lot of this is by hand, by eye. You know, I've done a lot of sharpening. Even before I started making knives, I was sharpening knives for you know, 15 plus years prior to that. I've always been a knife collector. 
Now we're on the 800 grit belt, still keeping it wet with the Windex. And what I found out is other than the Windex, making sure that the belt doesn't get gummed up as I'm pulling this across, it does also cool the belt and again minimizes my chance of overheating the edge. Now it's time for the 1000 grit. So I do have a platen that I don't really show very often that I'll use on this step every once in a while. And it's a platen that has one of my scotch Brite belts glued to the face of it. And sometimes I'll use that while sharpening instead of the area where I'm using right now. Because what it does is it gives me just a little bit of slack, but still has kind of a backer on it. And I'll probably show you all that in a later date. I like to use it to sharpen and go through these higher grids. All we're trying to do going through all these belts is create a really defined burr and a really smooth edge. And on the next step with the leather stropping, we're going to end up removing the burr and leaving the nice smooth razor sharp edge. And I used to use my leather strop that was on my 1x30 to do this partially because it was a lot faster but I've really been enjoying using this stropping pad for a while now and it's just really easy really simple and it doesn't require me to have any machine going Figure we'll go ahead and do one of my favorite little things to slice here, a little paper towel tube. We're gonna do it with the chef's knife. Okay, well. <laughs> Uh, that definitely cut through that. That's definitely user error too. Whenever I did it, I pulled this way and not through it. So we'll go ahead and try that again, just going through this time. <laughs> that worked. I cut through the open area. Let's try the chopper. Of course, we're going to cut more than just a paper towel tube with it.
Definitely. Definitely will work. As you can tell, I'm not exactly a chef. <laughs> but it definitely works to cut apples. Oh, let's cut a steak. Definitely works out. Hmm. That was good. I think what I like about this is if you're cutting this, you can go all the way to the actual cutting board and not hit your knuckles. So I call that a definite success. Well, I'll definitely say that these two knives are very sharp. I mean, whenever I was cutting through that steak, it was like nothing was there. And this knife will probably spend most of its life cutting steaks. I grill like three, four times a week. Literally, I grill a lot because it's really easy cleanup and you don't have to use a bunch of pots and pans and stuff like that. So I'll do chicken, meat, grill all the time. So this will spend most of its time either cutting steak or barbecue chicken or something like that. So it'll probably pick up a really cool patina throughout its life. I'm excited to see how that goes and this will be staying with me. It's my first hidden tang, so it ain't going nowhere. Now for the Farrier's Rasp knife, it of course holds an edge really well. And I mean that's how the blade looks after cutting through the wood and doing all that stuff, I mean, just beautiful still. And I'll probably list this one for sale. And if you've never seen how I sell knives, it's typically just message me on Facebook or you know the TRE Workshop uh, Facebook page. There's a link for it in the description below. There always is. You can go over there, send me a message. I'll send you a price. Or you can email me but that one will be going up for sale as soon as I finish the sheath next week because that's what we're gonna be doing on next week's Shop Talk Tuesday is the sheath for this and uh, go on from there. But guys, if you're wondering, what's the next project? What are, what are the things that we're gonna be building next? So the next like Friday, Saturday, the weekend build videos are gonna be based on these knives right here so these are going to be our quarter inch thick 80 crv2 knives that i'm going to be doing to just basically help me round out the rest of the money for the shop build and originally i was going to just focus on stock removal and that's it because at the point that i was going to make these i was planning on already having the shop take down or the forges but i think what i'm going to do is I'm gonna forge all the knives. They're gonna be really similar shapes and everything, but I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and forge all of these profiles. So the handles, the blades, do all of that stuff, because I feel like if we're gonna do a set of knives and it's gonna be something like this, 
where it's going to be a unique thing because I typically don't make a batch of knives and then sell them. These are going to be very unique and I will never make these particular knives ever again once I get done with them. It'll be the only five that are like them and uh, all the proceeds from this are going to go straight towards the shop build. Same thing with stuff like this. The knives that I sell like this straight to the shop. So I think that that's going to be the next build series. We're going to start that this week and you'll have a video this weekend. And if you haven't noticed, I kind of changed up the way that I, I release my videos. I'm only doing two a week now instead of the three. And there's going to be a Shop Talk Tuesday every single week. And then I'm going to release a video on either Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. And if I decide to release a video on Friday and Sunday, well then you get an extra video. If I don't, then you're only getting the one video. The whole reason behind that is I wanted to be able to complete more of the projects per video and whenever I'm trying to do the whole three videos a week thing it means I have to break up the builds a lot more and separate it into like five parts of a knife build versus maybe two parts or one part so that's why I'm gonna be doing it that way the shop talk Tuesday build series will always be based on something that y'all are gonna learn so we will have a build along knife that we're taking and going into all the different parts of it as we're going. That's going to be the really educational part of the channel. And the Friday build videos, there's still going to be some educational parts to it, but it's going to be really based on me just having fun and making stuff. So that's the whole way that the videos are working out now. Uh, I will probably closer towards the end of the year. Um, whenever where my job's not as busy I might actually do a month long daily vlog to where y'all actually get to see everything that goes on in the shop every single day and what it looks like inside my shop so whether I am drawing designs or whether I am cutting out templates whether I am you know prepping for the day that's gonna be coming up in the next day y'all will get to see what it looks like inside of my workshops whenever I'm actually doing all this stuff daily. And it's a, it's a pretty cool kind of behind the scenes type deal to where y'all actually get an idea of what really goes on in my shop and how much work it takes to actually do all this stuff. So I'll probably go ahead and do that. Like I said, during the uh, non-peak season of my job. So we'll see how that goes. I'll keep y'all updated. Now, that's the end of this one. If y'all would give this video a thumbs up, share this video. One of my other videos, if you haven't yet, Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for spending your time with me. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. I'll catch y'all next time.